Well, unless you've been living under a rock, you may have noticed it's finally here. The industrial revolution may have been hidden from most people, or it may even have been like the boiling of a frog where you didn't know exactly when it was gonna impact your job, your work, your life. But we have seen this artificial intelligence, this AI revolution coming. It has been brewing and filtering into different parts of our lives now for years and years. Whether you are in business or in education, education, or in any type of field, you have now seen artificial intelligence come into your field in many different forms and places. And so with ChatGPT kind of taking the world by storm this November and December, we have seen this growth from maybe the past couple of decades of artificial intelligence being something cool, you know, a computer winning a Pong game against a person or beating a grandmaster in chess to Siri and online personal assistants answering questions to now really being able to do things that really only humans could do. Whether that's writing an essay or creating some type of poem or song or the many other uses that ChatGPT and the technology from OpenAI is able to do, what we are faced with now is a decision. We can try to shun all of this wonderful and creative potential and opportunity that ChatGPT has because we wanna stay with archaic practices that have been around for a long time and quite frankly, haven't worked for that long. Or we can, as George Coro says, use change as an opportunity to make learning better, to make the experience better. And so that that is what this video and this podcast is all about. It's how can we as teachers, as educators, as people who are facilitating learning, as school leaders, how can we harness the power of artificial intelligence for better learning experiences? I'm AJ Giuliani. I have been writing and talking and speaking and creating podcasts and videos like this about education for the last two decades. I have worked at every level on the K through 12 spectrum, whether it be a middle school teacher, high school teacher, K through five instructional coach or administrator. I've also worked at University of Penn Graduate School of Education under the Penn Literacy Network umbrella. And I get to spend a lot of time working with schools, working with teachers, working with different people from around the country, from around the world and thinking about how we can do education better. And so what has happened with artificial intelligence kind of hitting the mainstream, right? Chat GPT kind of taking the world by storm, I think it set a lot of folks back. I've been writing a lot, talking with a lot of different schools, working with different groups around this, and the same types of conversations come up again and again. And these conversations are AI, specifically Chat GPT, is impacting our old way of doing things. And so what I wanna talk about in this video is how specifically seven different ways teachers and anybody in the education field can harness the power of AI for better learning. So that's what we're going to dive into. We've always seen uh, in the past couple of decades, especially since Google and search engines have been around, that students have had an abundance of information at their fingertips, right? We think about moving past those days when cut and paste was actually cut and paste. And now we're moving into a kind of realm where they don't just have information at their fingertips, but they have creative and creation tools at their fingertips. They have not only information that they have to synthesize, that they have to apply, they now have a personal assistant that can do that for them better than most people can actually do it. It does it a lot better than I can. So if you don't know what chat GPT is, I have a link to an article in a video that I did that kind of explains it more in depth, but I think you're probably coming to this with an understanding of what this is and how artificial intelligence is impacting the world of education. I'm gonna talk about seven different ways that we can harness it, but way number one, right? Thing number one that we can do is just to embrace it. I'm very worried in what I'm seeing with schools blocking ChatGPT, with people 
creating systems that are meant to see, did a student use chat GPT or not in order to complete this writing assignment? While I understand the need for that, while our institutions are trying to catch up, this is the reality of the situation that we're in right now. And just as we use a calculator to help uh, in terms of the math and computations that we're doing, the same way ChatGPT is going to be a tool that we are going to use. And when I say we, I mean students, teachers, school leaders, parents, community members, everyone. If you haven't used it before, jump on there. You can use it for many different types of things, but we have to get over that first hurdle and we have to embrace it. We have to understand that this is a tool that is free, that is available to everyone worldwide with an internet connection, and there is just no right way to police it. Now, are there opportunities for us to write with pencil and pen and paper? Of course. There always has been and there always will be to do some of those low tech options to see where students are, to really kind of understand where they're at. But if this tool exists and they can use it and it can help them in terms of learning, creating and those different types of things, then just step one is embracing it as a reality and kind of moving from there. Thing number two that we can really use it for is to substitute Google search, even kind of like a study partner type of thing. We think about homework in itself, it always was kind of a problem because you would give homework to a student and you didn't know what that student's circumstances were, right? None of the students were going back to the same situation. There could be some student that was going back to an adult that was gonna help them with their homework. Another student maybe had an older sibling. Another student that had nobody that was gonna help them. Another student that was doing it on the bus with with no access to internet resources. Another student that had a computer and a tablet. So there's always been that fine line when we gave homework. Well, now we're giving homework and students can use ChatGPT to do a lot of it. Those that uh, have internet access and the ability to kind of pull it up. But the way I think about it in terms of harnessing the power is in the past when we would do a Google search, the crazy thing was that there was all kinds of junk in that Google search. And so a lot of times as teachers, we'd be like, ah, oh, how do you filter it out? There was even something that I spent a lot of time with my students using called the crap test, right? Which was looking at some specific factors to say whether or not this is viable. Well, ChatGPT does that for you. It pulls information that they know is from viable and reputable sources. And what they do is that they're able to kind of break down and say, hey, this is an awesome way to use it. And I, I think if we can use it that way, it's powerful. And also as a study partner, you can put in the prompt learn and there's so many different types of things that you can learn from that, right? There's so many different types of things where you can put in, I wanna learn about this and you can put in a whole chapter of your textbook and it's gonna give you study questions and things and you can have a conversation back and forth. If you wanna learn world language, you can have a conversation like a study partner back and forth with ChatGPT. So I would say the second thing is use it to kind of replace that Google search, replace some of those conversations we would have. And as it's kind of a, a very intelligent study partner that you can learn and converse with. Number three is kind of a cool one that we're starting to see people develop and you can develop your own chatbot. I'll put a link below of how you can do this. You can train it as a teacher to uh, come up with answers to frequently asked questions that your students have. And when your students come to your website, they can then engage with this chatbot that you've basically created to be an extension of who you are as a teacher 24 seven. So at any point in time, a kid can ask it a question and have a wealth of knowledge from you. You can put all your notes, resources, study guides, test answers, all those types of things, and kids can then use this chatbot as an extension of you. I'm gonna think we're gonna see lots of companies doing this. We're already starting to see it, but I really believe as teachers, this is a fantastic way to kind of harness the power by creating our own kind of chat GPT artificial intelligence bot that lives on our websites or LMSs where students can interact with and they're getting information directly from us as the teacher. Number four, I would say supercharge your writing, your research, and specifically your brainstorming. You can input into ChatGPT so many different prompts 
Uh, and the prompts can show specifically brainstorm 10 ideas about XYZ. Combine a thought process of this person connected to this person in the language of, you know, a lot of people are messing around doing King James. But there's so many different ways that you can brainstorm. You can get outlines for your writing faster. You can pull up research and quotes and studies to support your arguments. You can pull up excerpts of different works all throughout history to support your writing. You can supercharge your writing process in the same way that spell check and you know things like Grammarly really supported helping with conventions and grammar and those different types of things. Now we have ChatGPT to help with the creative process. Yes, we still want students writing and thinking independently, but what a wonderful tool we have to supercharge the writing, give us a basis of something to work from and build off of that. We are already seeing people in all kinds of fields building right now all types of writing projects using ChatGPT, including lawyers, doctors, real estate agents, Almost every field imaginable is starting to use this technology. Why wouldn't we allow our students to supercharge their writing with it as well? Number five would be simulating different or expert perspectives. So you can ask ChatGPT to give you a perspective of a person in a certain situation or a specific historical figure. Almost any different type of simulation you can think of sharing an expert opinion. And what this allows us to do is get different perspectives on subjects that we wouldn't normally get if we did a Google search or we talked to one person or we pulled up one perspective. It gives a lot of different perspectives on anything you're, you're researching or learning about or studying or diving into. It's a fantastic way to supplement inquiry and project and problem-based learning uh, experiences by kind of simulating that expert and having them respond to it. Uh, number six, I would say, and I'm putting a number of different things in here, would be lessons, curriculum, and deep learning questions. There's a lot of teachers that have to create daily lesson plans. This would just take it to the moon of being able to allow you to do that quickly. But if we think about things that are actually going to impact the learning, I don't think the whole creating daily lesson plans is, is really the benefit to the learning. I'm thinking it in terms of how can we combine curriculum? We always want to pull something of science into social studies and maybe our business class and engineering class and these different types of things. Now we have a wonderful tool to say, how can we mash up X, Y, and Z, give us some ideas. Boom, all of a sudden we now have a template for a project-based experience that students can do, that multiple teachers can work on together, that they're gonna have authentic, meaningful, and relevant learning experiences. You can do the same thing and ask for deep learning questions that are open-ended questions. The students would have to think deeply and create things. Think about coming up with essential questions or enduring understandings or any of these types of things that's really going to allow you to harness that AI to hit deeper learning and empower students. There's so many ways to do that. Number seven is an add-on to that, and it's we can take the principles of universal design for learning, which means we want to make sure that we're not giving the same exact lesson to all 30 kids in our class because all 30 kids don't learn the same, right? We don't wanna give the same assessment to all 30 students because they may be able to show their learning in different ways. Now for years and years and years, this has kind of been pie in the sky. We went from this traditional approach of teaching the same lesson to all 30 students at the same pace. And then we moved towards differentiation, which really was just us being reactive and trying to help out different students who weren't in that middle ground of the lesson that we're teaching. And then we've moved towards personalization and specifically universal design for learning. And I like how Katie Novak presents it as a buffet approach. Instead of coming to a dinner party and having one thing to eat for all your guests, you wanna have a buffet approach where you have a bunch of different options so people can choose and pick what works for them. Well, now ChatGPT has given you so many different ways. Say your kids want to learn about photosynthesis. Now they can 
read something about photosynthesis, they can watch something about photosynthesis. You can now say, hey, uh, ChatGPT, give me five different ways my students can be assessed on photosynthesis. Or, and you can, you can throw all different types of prompts and options out there. Now, the students actually have an ability to kind of say, all right, this works for me. I'm demonstrating my understanding and we can UDL everything. It's gonna say, take some time working the prompts, but I think the potential for this is huge. I got one final use that I thought about when I was talking with a really good friend of mine who is a teacher at a public school that's just not funded that well. And I was talking to him about coming back from the holiday break, what he's focusing on, those different types of things. And he was talking about writing all these grants. You know, we don't have the funding for this. I'm trying to bring in the technology for this. I'm trying to bring in books into my classroom for this. And he goes, the cool thing is there's all these grants available, but it's so time consuming. Enter ChatGPT. What a better way to help you write and create grant proposals that are gonna support your students' learning, give them resources, that the opportunities are out there. We've all written a grant out. If you're, you're in education, or at least if you're in public education like me, you've written a grant for something along the lines of somewhere. There's so many options out there, but it's time consuming, it takes forever. And this is a fantastic way, as we were discussing, to kind of take that grant right into the next level and be able to 10x, 100x your output on how many different grant proposals you can write, how much funding resources you can get for your classroom. There's plenty of other ways we're going to see artificial intelligence beyond chat GPT being used in the education world and specifically for our students to have better learning experiences. But I believe that these seven, actually eight ways, are things that we could just start with uh, and use to better the learning experience right now. I would love to hear in the comments ways that you are planning on using AI to kind of benefit our students learning, maybe some things that you're already doing or planning on doing. Let's share in the comments with each other because that's the only way we're all gonna learn better.